Hey, my name is Brandon and I'm on site with Go RV in Canada in the Northwest Territories and today we're going to teach you how to chase the Aurora Borealis on your winter RV trip. If you haven't watched the winter RVing video yet, go watch that and then come to this one. Tip number one is understanding the data. Download the Space Weather Live app. This app will give you the most accurate live data of the Aurora. When you open the app, it'll look intimidating at first, but there are a lot of key things to make it easier to understand. First is the KP index. The KP index is a scale used to characterize the magnitude of geomagnetic disturbances. To make that easier to understand, basically the higher the KP value, the further south the aurora can be seen. There are a couple of main things to understand, and this includes the solar wind, the magnetic field, and the hemispheric power. Ideal values include a solar wind of over 500 kilometers per second and a density of over 10, ideally 20. The magnetic field has two charts, including BT and BZ. Your BT should be over 10 and your BZ should be as far south as possible. If the BZ is south, it will appear red, or if it's north, it will appear green. The hemispheric power should be at least 20 gigawatts to be seen in the northern region. If all these values line up, you should be in for a pretty good show. Each chart is also color coordinated. Green means low, yellow means moderate, orange means high, and red means very high. If all the charts read red, or even one of them, you should consider staying up late and keeping an eye on the sky. You can read more on the Space Weather Live app, which is the most reliable and accurate readings for Aurora data. Tip two choosing your location. The farther north you are, the higher chance you'll have of seeing it. This comes back to what we talked about before, which is the KP index. When we reach KP5, we experience what's called a geomagnetic storm. The higher this value goes, the larger the storm will be. We call this the G scale. At KP5, it is known as a G1 storm, KP6 is a G2, KP7, G3, and all the way up to KP9. Light pollution plays a huge role in choosing your location. The further away you get from city or town lights, the higher odds you have of seeing the aurora. Our eyes take about 10 minutes to adjust in darkness, so it's best to find a location with almost no light. You can Google light pollution map and find the darkest locations nearest to you. Weather also plays a huge part in choosing your location. If it's cloudy, you won't be able to see the aurora. You can use apps to predict cloud coverage. However, they're not very accurate, but they can give you a good idea of where to go. And that brings us to tip number three, timing. There's a lot of false information about when you can see the aurora, but you can actually see it all year round. The problem is during the summer months, our days are longer, therefore you have shorter nights. The lights can be seen over 200 times a year in the Northwest Territories. So to give yourself the best chance of seeing them, you should plan a trip from September to March. Make sure you're always checking the weather. You don't want to get stuck in a blizzard at 2 a.m. And that's why having a mobile home is the best way to do it. Tip number four is community. Aurora chasing has grown rapidly in popularity due to the pandemic. It's great to find a community in your area that can provide photos, tips, and live updates. One of the best ways to find your community is through social media platforms like Facebook. When you are out chasing, be considerate of others. This means driving safe and not stopping in dangerous places, especially in the winter. In the winter, when the snow becomes soft, if you park on the side of the highway, you're at higher risk of getting stuck, which can put others at risk as well. When you drive into a location, make sure you turn your headlights off as quick as possible. There could be other people photographing the aurora or just watching and it can ruin the experience for them. And tip number five, how to stay safe. Your safety is top priority. Make sure you have an emergency kit that includes something like an emergency blanket, a med kit, extra water, extra food, extra batteries, and even an extra headlamp. It's a good idea to let someone know when you're leaving and when you expect to return. If you're feeling fatigued or falling asleep, make sure you pull over somewhere safe instead of making the drive home. This is why using an RV to chase the Aurora is ideal because you can always rest where it's safe to park. A jerry can with extra gas is also a great idea. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to chase the Aurora Borealis. You can visit GoRVing Canada's website to hear more about how you can plan your ultimate winter RV experience.